Yo guys, welcome back to the Uncle Sharma channel. Happy New Year, 2020 vision. I had a nice Christmas break, had a nice New Year's Eve. Hope everyone else had with their families. It's time to get back into the swinger thing. The Serie A is coming back. And of course now, January, which means the transfer window is open, which means it's time to discuss all the juicy transfer news. First things first, I gotta announce the winner of the uh, PayPal giveaway, which I decided a couple of weeks ago. A thank you to everyone who's entered. You know, Inter fans, non-Inter fans, a lot of people entered. Uh, thank you to everyone. And the winner, as I announced on my Twitter just a few moments ago, is Chenzo Rossi. So well done to Chenzo. Get in touch with me on Twitter or on YouTube and I'll uh, transfer over those $50. But yeah, now we can move on to Inter. I will be doing a full preview of the Inter-Napoli match, which will be uh, on Monday. And we've got a little surprise guest, a Napoli fan will be coming on but now to talk about the hot transfer news and the first one is the one that's been in the newspapers and online all over the place is Christian Eriksen to Inter. Christian Eriksen of course a Danish international footballer center attacking midfielder that plays for Tottenham Hotspurs. His contract is ending at the end of this summer so at the end of the season he is free to choose uh, to play for whoever he wants on a free transfer and Inter are looking to get him on a free transfer at the end of the season and of course you know Beppe Marotta we know he's a free transfer specialist Don Beppe loves a free transfer we know from the Juve days in Pirlo, Patrice Evra, Pogba, Emre Chan. but and again that's what he's looking to do at Inter and I am very excited by the move there's also talk because there's so much competition for Ericsson Inter might even try to anticipate the deal for January because Spurs will be much more willing to part with him with a little bit of cash rather than let him go for free and there would be less competition in terms of uh, the wages that we would have to offer Ericsson apparently uh, PSG are the front runners at the moment who have offered him around 12 million euros a year um, so really really high salary and you know it's difficult to compete with PSG and uh, I think with Ericsson you know with Spurs they're not they don't really pay top wages um, I think wages will be a big factor in where Ericsson does end up or if he wants to win trophies but PSG also offer that of course we know that they have the uh, French league wrapped up pretty much every single year. The rumoured fee that Inter would have to offer if we want to secure him in January is said to be around 20 million pounds or 20 million euros which is a very good deal for a player like Christian Eriksen who is 27 years old but he's going to be 28 in February so he's a player at his peak you know a peak age so a perfect time to you know make his uh, move to a club but obviously as we know Inter also heavily interested in Arturo Vidal who's said to be the priority number one target for January to bolster that midfield which we know is the most in need department in terms of quality needed not in terms of numbers necessarily we have the numbers but quality wise that step up needs to come in and Arturo Vidal of course I think is the perfect player for that experience knows the Conte system, knows the Italian league, wants to leave Barcelona, wants to play in the Conte once again. He's uh, sued Barcelona for you know some bonuses that haven't been paid, so he's clearly trying to leave. And he's available for a reasonable amount. Apparently Barcelona want 20 million, but Inter are willing to offer around 15, uh, you know, with a loan, with obligation to buy. Yes, he is currently, you know, aging. He's, a, he's 32 years old, I believe. So he's definitely outside of his peak years, but, Still, as we saw when Inter played Barcelona in the Champions League, still a quality player and definitely a step up from Vecino and Gagliardini. There's no arguments about that. Yes, it's not a particularly long-term move. You know, how long can you really offer Inter? Maybe two years at a really good level, maybe three if we can push it. But Vidal has never been known to be, you know, a top professional in terms of outside the pitch and taking care of himself. It's very similar to Rajan Angolan, actually. Those two are almost footballing twins, you know, at least... The thing with Vidal is he made his moves a bit more uh, more smarter than uh, Nangolan. You know, he went to Juve after Leverkusen and then Bayern Munich and Barcelona. So titles on titles, top teams on top teams. Whereas Nangolan seemed to go more with his heart rather than chasing titles and money where he stayed at Cagliari, then went to Roma and then stayed there more, probably longer than he should have when he had offers from the Premier League and now then went to Inter and still hasn't won any major title. That is the big difference between Nangolan and Vidal, you know, very similar players, but at the end of the day, Vidal is a proven winner, proven mentality, and, uh, you know, 
with age also comes a bit more uh, wiseness off the field and uh, he has been rumored to have you know calmed down off the field not as uh, wild as he used to be so yeah definitely Vidal if we can wrap that deal up for January it's uh, it's a must do but Christian Eriksen on the other hand he's been one of my favorite Premier League players of recent years I just love watching him play such a neat and tidy player tech is outstanding you know elite a technical player he hits double digits for assists every single season since 2015 uh, 10 plus assists every single season which is you know very impressive he creates chances like not many other players in world football and he scores goals as well you know he's uh, he usually hits around the 8 to 10 goals mark uh, a season sometimes he goes even over that yes he would probably be taking some space away or competing with a spot with Stefano Sensi or depending on whether Conte is looking to maybe switch the formation to from a 3-5-2 to a 3-4-1-2 allowing him to play in that centre attacking midfield role that's quite unclear what the plan is um, but it seems that Ericsson it has been confirmed that Inter have made contact for Ericsson so this is not just a made up rumour Inter are clearly interested and uh, they have made the first steps to get him and, you know people that complaining or saying that oh we don't need Christian Eriksen for me transfers there's there's two types of transfers there's uh, you know when there's a need in the team and that's Arturo Vidal so we need that you know player that can challenge Sensi and Barella properly you know there's no quality drop off if Vidal or Sensi or Barella play and Eriksen is an opportunity transfer Eriksen's contract is expiring at the moment and Eriksen is one of the best playmakers in world football. That's an opportunity that Inter, you know, they can't really let go. And that was a similar, you know, situation to in 2010 when we, uh, 2009, sorry, when we bought Wesley Schneider from Real Madrid. That was also a need in the team because uh, Mourinho clearly was asking for a central attacking midfielder for his 4-2-3-1 formation. But there was a clear opportunity there with uh, Schneider looking to leave and uh, Real Madrid <laughs> looking to offload him. And this is similar, you know, he's clearly been wanting to leave Spurs for a while. Real Madrid was strongly interested in him last summer, which, you know, says a lot if Real Madrid are interested. If we can secure him either for January or the end of uh, the summer, especially on a free, that is, you know, an opportunity that is very hard to, to let go of. The main issue I see with the deal is, of course, the wages, as I mentioned before. PSG are offering around 12 million euros, which is a lot of money. And, uh, you know, if Inter uh, reported to offer him around 10 million plus bonuses, which would make him, you know, the highest paid player in the team. And that would, you know, mess up some uh, hierarchies in the team. And, you know, that can always lead to, you know, other players asking for more. Now we sure that he would be a certain starter, you know, because if he has to fit into the 3-5-2, he would, you know, have need some adaptation time, adaptation to the league as well, adaptation to Conte's tactics and methods. I am in favour of the deal, but... The wages is a big stumbling block and I'm not sure whether Inter are really willing to, you know, make him the uh, highest paid player in the team. One thing is for certain, the names that we are linked with now, you know, the quality difference between now and the past is different. You know, now we can actually attract these top level players, you know, pe players want to come and play for Antonio Conte. They're seeing that we are first in the league, they're seeing where this team is going. You know, these are all good signs. But then at the end of the day, there's a team like Juve in the league as well that, you know, can come and just steal the player right under the nose. And this is what, this is what happened with uh, Dejan Kulusevski, the player that, you know, was reportedly Inter had already agreed a deal with uh, Atalanta and Palma to sign him. But at the end of the summer, but Juventus came in. Of course, he was the uh, most uh, outstanding breakout player of the first half of the season in Serie A, scoring goals and assists and, you know, impressing everyone with his physicality and his running. And uh, they've come in, you know, smashed our bid of what was reported to be around 30 to 35 million euros. They've come in with 35 plus 10 bonuses plus 2 million a year to the player. And, you know, you can't really compete with that. Uh, and we're still not at that level in terms of revenues and being able to offer the players, you know, that kind of uh, that kind of money yet. And uh, yeah, fair play to Juventus. They've snapped up one of the best young players in the league. But honestly speaking, I'm not actually that sad about it. I made a thread on Twitter, you know, trying to analyse the player. And I was, I am a big fan of the player. The Conte, I think he would have had to switch from being a winger, centre attacking midfielder to a centre mid. I could see that, I can definitely see that uh, position in him, you know, that he's got the physicality and the way he moves around the pitch he likes to drift inside uh, Juve he probably 
will continue being a winger or move to you know stay at center attacking mid similar you know what to what uh, Bernadeschi is doing at the moment but he'll do it better than Bernadeschi I'm pretty sure of that he's got final product he's got you know running ability dribbling and final decision making which is very rare to see at his age 45 million euros for a 19 year old who's only had six good months in the Serie A is too much of a risk that we can't really take we've seen in the past you know players like Piontek uh, players like that that you know after losing out on uh, Kulusevski I uh, I would set my eyes on uh, the likes of uh, Gaetano Castrovilli from Fiorentina who is one of my maybe my favorite young Italian player in the league right now and Sandro Tonali who is I think the best Italian talent out there right now Tonali would definitely be you know a signing that we need to make maybe not right now but in the summer because he would be competing for the spot with Brozovic uh, for that uh, you know center defensive mid regista role and I think he will be you know the regista of the future for the Italy team and for whichever team signs him and I hope Juve don't sign him Castrovilli on the other hand is a bit more of a creative player he would be you know challenging Sensi Imbarella uh, in the uh, Mezzala role, he's one that likes to get into the box, you know, create chances, also track back. He's a bit of a do it all. Also, him, you know, he's only he's 23 years old, and he has he had a few years in the Serie B, uh, an OK level. So this year has been his first, you know, breakthrough moment. So you know, you can't take, you have to take, a, you have to be patient with these young players sometimes and see like whether you know is it just a bit of a hype at the moment or is there actually a really good player there. And Castrovilli compared to Tonali would be a lot cheaper as well. Fiorentina said to be wanting around 20 to 25 million, whereas Tonali looks around 40 million mark. But, you know, Tonali looks like a generational talent, and this is what Inter should be building their future on generational talents like Bastoni, who we have right now, and Sandro Tonali. But yeah, that's it for today, guys. As I said, my Napoli preview will be coming soon. Let me know in the comments below who would you sign? Tonali, Castrovilli, Vidal, Ericsson. What do you think of Ericsson? Would you sign him? Would you make him our highest paid player? Or would you set your sights on someone else? Let me know in the comments below if you can suggest someone else. And uh, leave a like and subscribe as always guys. Thank you for the support. And I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.